Wonderful. So if everything went well, now on your desktop somewhere, you should have an icon that says Rhino 6. Uh, that's the version that I'm currently running as of this recording. And as you double click, you should get this uh, initial welcome screen where you can see your last your last files and this and some news about what's going on in the, in the Rhino community these days. You can close this up and then you're going to land on this view, which if you're if you're familiar with other 3D modeling environments, um, uh, a lot of the UI here should look familiar and should be you should be comfortable with it. And especially if you have been using Rhino uh, already, then you probably just want to skip to the next video where I start where I move on to opening Grasshopper and using it right away. But I want to use this video to give you like a really quick rundown of what Rhino is, how to do basic geometry, how to move yourself around the different UIs. And because we will need that uh, in order to connect Rhino geometry with Grasshopper geometry and do some a little bit of basic interoperability between the two environments. Okay, um, so let me show you a little bit of what's going on here. At the most basic level, Rhino is a 3D model environment. So you can see that right now on the screen, I have four views of the 3D model environment. I have a perspective view and then I have top, front and right view, right? Um, I can move around my 3D environment by clicking on the viewport that I'm interested. And then for example, I can rotate around by doing right mouse click. So you can see how my right mouse, right mouse click rotates around. I can, I can pan around the screen if I do shift right mouse like this. Okay. And then I can also zoom in with my mouse wheel. All right. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then I can, if I want to maximize this viewport, I can double click what it says perspective and I can go back to the full view by double clicking again. Okay, so I can go back and forth between the two. Um, everything else should be quite familiar. So for example, I have a toolbar here of icons to create basic geometry. I have a toolbar here of simple operations like opening new files, saving files, uh, working with the zoom, etc. Here on the right hand side, I have a, um, I have a I have a menu of tabs. For example, I have a tab for properties. So when you select geometry, you can see particular properties of the geometry here. Or I also have a tab that says layers, where you can access like a simple uh, layer system where that will be useful if you want to put geometry in different layers and then turn them on and off. Uh, this is a very common paradigm in like all any design software that I can think of. Okay. And then <clears throat> here on the top, um, I have a command line where I can input custom commands or aliases for doing operations <coughs> for me doing operations here in Rhino. And this will be also the place where we will type grasshopper so that we can fire up grasshopper and start working with the two with the two platforms side by side. Okay. Um, now, before we start doing basic geometry, I want you to join me in customizing a little bit of how this looks, because um, I don't know what you think, but I find the gray background in the viewport a little too overwhelming and a little not nice to look at. And this is especially bad if at some point you start taking screenshots of the geometry that you have here. So what I would like to do is I would like to change the background and make it full white and the grid lines making them very, very faint. I'm going to do that by going here to tools, going to options, and then this options menu will pop up where all the way down here where it says Rhino options, I can go to appearance and then I can expand this into colors. And here I have access to the colors of the viewport. So the first thing I'm going to do is that for background, I'm going to click here and I'm going to do a full white. And you can see how now um, the background is white. And then for the major grid line, I'm going to do a very faint gray. So something like 233 could work. And for the minor grid lines, I'm going to do even fainter, like 245 or something like that. Um, as I press OK, you can see that now I feel that the screen is much nicer to see. And if you take screenshots, because it's a white background, it mixes much better with like um, your layouting software, Illustrator, Photoshop, whatever you're working with. Okay. Um, so I, I am tired of seeing Rhino screenshots with great backgrounds. So please, please, please take a second and join me in doing this. Um, and it will improve your uh, graphic design life so much. <laughs> 
All right, and enough of the ranting. Let me show you how to do basic geometry uh, here in Rhino. As you can expect, um, because it's a 3D model environment, we have access to simple geometry generation tools. So for example, here on the left hand side, I have a toolbar uh, where I can say I can I can create a single point. So for example, I can click there and go to the viewport. And then this point on the XY plane will show up. I can create more points by just clicking here and going there again and again. But uh, there is a faster way of doing that, which is if you press anywhere on the right mouse click, if you do right mouse click on the screen, what will happen is that you will repeat the last command that came up here in the command line. So if I do that, I repeat this. So I, I start repeating the point command and I can start clicking around and adding more and more points. Alternatively, I can just go here to the command line and type point. And then as I do that, it asks me for the location of the point and then I just place it there. Similarly, I can do polyline here or I can type polyline here on the command line and then it asks me for the start of the polyline and then I can move and create this polyline around these vertices for example okay and then I hit right mouse click and I end um, and I end this polyline so points and polylines very simple uh, and then you can also see that I can modify this geometry so for example I can click on this point here and then this gumball interface will show up i can move this point around in three-dimensional space so you can see that now it's not on the xy plane anymore it's a little above okay and the same i can do collections of points uh, i can do groups of points uh, and similarly i can choose the polyline and i can for example move the polyline anywhere in three-dimensional space all right um, i can for example rotate it so I can use this to rotate it a little bit in 3D space uh, so that it's not uh, so that it's not aligned with X, Y anymore. Uh, or, for example, and this is one of the most interesting features, I can start clicking directly on um, I can start clicking on the vertices of the polyline so that I can modify the vertices independently of the whole polyline. So, for example, this one, this one here and this one here. And by doing that, you can see that the geometry of the polyline has now changed and the polyline is not planar anymore. Now the vertices are in different planes, okay? So there's a lot of stuff that can be done here uh, with simple geometry like that. Um, but one of the strengths of, um, of Rhino is that not only it lets you work with basic geometry like points and polylines, but it also lets you work with nerves geometry. Uh, and what nerve geometry means and how to control it, etc. I'm going to get into that farther down the road throughout this course. But um, I want to give you like a small teaser of what that looks like right now. The main idea behind nerve geometry is that as opposed to, for example, mesh geometry that is defined entirely by vertices and faces joining those vertices. And therefore, all the geometry that you can create is discrete, is formed by this basic entities of made out of triangles. Uh, the basic idea between behind nurse geometry is that uh, the representation behind this geometry is made up of mathematical polynomials and mathematical functions, which means that um, it's, it's a bit more computationally expensive to display on a screen. But at the same time, the advantage is that it gives you smooth, non discrete curvature and smooth non-discrete geometry over which is defined by a different set of things. So for example, uh, if if I were to go here and create a curve out of the control points, let me remove this here. Uh, I could click here, curve through control points, and I can say I'm going to click, create a curve by defining the control points here, this one, this one, this one. And you can see that um, as opposed to a a polyline like we were doing before this curve is infinitely uh, continuous so it has no kinks it has no vertices in the middle and we can control it based on this thing called the control polygon which has control points that we can drag around to modify the geometry uh, this is very attractive and very nice because it allows us to create geometry that feels a bit more freeform 
and that has a bit more flexibility to work with as opposed to, for example, meshes. So, for example, I can create here, I can create these two. Um, I can create these two. I can create another one here like this. And I'm going to move this curve a little bit in the, <clears throat> in the C direction. So I'm going to move it up and I'm going to move this other one a little farther up. So now I have three curves in three-dimensional space that have been generated with control points. And nerves logic and nerves doesn't only apply to curves, it can also apply to surfaces. So for example, I can create a loft surface over these three curves that I just created. So the first one here, the second one here, and the third one here. And if I right click this and I, and I input some options, you can see that I have this lofted surface that is going through the three nerves curves that I just generated. Uh, this doesn't look great. So something that we can do on the viewport is that we can go to perspectives, right click here and choose different ways for Rhino to render this geometry. I'm going to choose, you can choose, for example, rendered, which gives you this really nice ambient occlusion view with shadowing. Uh, or you can choose, for example, ghosted, which is a bit faster, and it gives you some shading also for the geometry as well, okay? But the nice thing about this nerve surface is that it's infinitely smooth. Uh, we don't have to care about um, the number of vertices, the number of triangles, because it's defined by a mathematical function. So uh, you can interpolate points anywhere in its UV space, and then um, you don't need to discretize this. Uh, you don't need to discretize it. Um, that concept, for example, is very relevant. Uh, if we were to, for example, try to 3D print this surface, you would see that we will need to turn it into a mesh. So, for example, if I click on the surface and I say, let's turn this into a mesh, uh, and given some options, you can see that meshes always have to be and, and always have to end up being discretized. So this would be the mesh representation of that surface. And you can see that if we start zooming in, uh, it's not discrete, it's not, it's not smooth. It has like discrete partitions, which are the triangles and the vertices that are forming this nerve surface. Um, so we, so it's two very different ways of representing geometry. Um, a very clear example of how to, um, of how this works as well, is that if we were to create a sphere out of nerves, you can see that I can create a sphere here with a particular radius and a center. And again, as I zoom in, this sphere is infinitely smooth because it's, represent it's represented by a function. Whereas if I go to mesh primitives sphere and I create a sphere here, uh, you can see that this sphere, because it is a mesh, it has been discretized into faces. You can choose more or less vertices, more or less faces, but at the end of the day, no matter how many faces you choose, if you zoom enough, you will see that it's actually discreetly divided into planar faces. Um, so that's a little bit of the difference between nerves and meshes, depending on where you're coming from. We need, may need to wrap our hands around, around, around this. Um, but long story short, nerves give us a little bit more flexibility and a little bit of like this free form feeling uh, that we may want in our parametric modeling, um, in our parametric modeling workflows. Okay. So I think with this, we're now ready to move on into how Rhino as a st static 3D modeling environment can be enhanced um, by doing parametric modeling using its, um, its one of the main plugins in the project that is called Grasshopper. So let's take a look at that. <clears throat>